What's up everybody, how's it going? It's Merck, aka Dansquake here, and we are continuing with our playthrough of Near Replicant. I've had to take a break from the game, and I think I planted some stuff, and of course, the it, it had been a few sessions since I planted anything. Oh, wait a minute. I oh, know, they are dead, right? God damn it. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Um, since the last time I played, it's been it's been very busy and a bit of a frustrating time in terms of just getting work done. Um, I was supposed to go through the Yuffie DLC, and that took so much longer than expected because there was issues with um, Sony and like Square Enix making the code available for download, and it didn't work on PSN and, and blah blah. It was all these kind of issues, and then I, I sort of it took a while to sort out and record the Yuffie DLC. And it was also a pretty long DLC, there was a lot of recording for it. And then I was like, okay, I can, I can jump back into Near Replicant. And then I woke up and they were like, oh, um, the, the demo version of this new Strangers of, Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origins game is on PS5. You've got to check it out. And I'm like, oh god, okay. So that was another full day spent like working on that stuff. So it, it's been a lot longer than I would have liked. And I kind of, I lost my bearings a little bit on what I was doing last, so I'll have to I have to check it out. In terms of like, what fragments did I even have left? Uh, hmm. So hold on, what's the main quest then? Talk to Popola. Okay. Let me just talk to Popola to see where we are in the story again. One thing I did do while I was waiting for episode Yuffie to, to become available and stuff, I did the fishing quest. Um, I didn't do live commentary for it, but I basically did little recordings of each location and me catching at least one of each fish. And I wanted to, to gain a little bit of extra gold as well, a few extra Gs as well to, to buy some weapons potentially. So that's one thing that I'll be showing before this particular bit. Hey, Popola. Ah, you're back. Have you learned anything more about the Shadow Lord's key? I'm sorry, but it's going to take me some time yet. I see. Well, can I take something off your plate in the meantime? Hmm. Oh, how about this? You know the ferryman with the red bag, right? Well, he's been skipping out on work lately. Can I ask you to go to Seafront and check on him? Sure thing. Okay, so there was this whole shenanigans with the red bag guy. I still feel like I should probably continue and just make sure I've got that done as well before moving on. This feels alarmingly familiar. Ah. I'm sure that couple is merely having another one of their inane spats. Let us do our utmost not to get dragged into it this time, hmm? I'm pretty sure, like, all of the, the major side quests I want to do, they'll still be there when I get to the finale and it's like, go to the Shadow Lord's realm kind of thing. And I'd rather just do it all in one nice chunk, so that's what I'm going to do. So we'll focus on this bit for now. That being said... Uh, honestly, the, the difficulty being hard doesn't affect that much at this stage. It hasn't really affected much, so I'm just going to continue. I was thinking, should I go back to the title screen and change it to um, like normal or easy difficulty just to blast through that particular bit? But it'd be fine. So we've already got some major Kaine in a meal story. I'm thinking at this point, what more is there left for... Like their stories. We've had a lot of exposition dumps and a ton of reading to do for both of them, so I'm not really sure what's left. This might sound weird, but since I've been on the PS5 controller, it feels like the ball's much easier to steer. I'm not even having to use a slowdown thing, and I'm just able to sort of weave through. I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting used to it. Yeesh. I don't think I've ever seen fog this thick before. So we're going to find out the story bet between him and um, the girl in the shipwreck. Well, the Shade. Huh? What's that?
so I remember in the guide it mentioned that the extra content they put in was about like a couple of hours or something. And we did the quest and it was like, it took maybe 45 minutes or so, like no more than an hour. And I was like, I think they're being a bit ambitious with two, but I guess the fact that you do it again uh, during Route B and maybe you get some extra scenes and that kind of stuff, I guess it is maybe like two hours overall. Oh God, it's over. We'll help you find him. <laughs> really? Oh, thank you so much. And here we go again. Shall we begin by asking around at the tavern like before? I guess we kind of have to, even though we know where he is. Say, you're pretty handsome. Care to buy a lonely woman a drink? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, that one doesn't change either, unfortunately. The poor guy just does not get to enjoy a drink with a woman at the bar. Hard to believe a ship of this size managed to run aground. Hmm, what was that? Hey, is someone there? Okay, I definitely heard someone cough just now. Maybe it's one of those kids from town? But where are they? There you are. What are you doing here, kid? And who are you, anyway? Were you a passenger on this ship, maybe? <laughs> hey, it's okay. You don't need to be scared. That couple's petty squabbles have become something of an attraction for the locals. Doesn't surprise me in the least. Seeing people like that puts a little spring in your step, you know? You humans truly are a maddening bunch. Such buffoonery does little more than wear this old tome out. Buffoonery. So we just continue along here, right? Oh. Uh, wants to go back to the Southern Plains? What was the deal here? Talk to the brother of the man with the red bag. Oh shit, okay, fine. Where did that enormous ship even go? Hey there. How are you feeling? Well, your cough seems better at least. Check it out. I brought you some bread today. <laughs> oh, easy there. Jeez, you must have been starving. Well, look, no one's gonna take this from you, so just... Take it easy so you don't choke on it, okay? So, what were you doing on this boat, kid? Actually, scratch that. First things first. I can't just keep calling you kid. You got a name? Well, this is going nowhere fast. Let's see. About Louise. I mean, it just sort of popped into my head, but what do you think? <laughs> Guess you're okay with it. Well, it's nice to meet you, Louise. 
Yeah, so to create the thumbnail and the title for the episode featuring the Louise battle, I had to look up what the name was for the shade slash boss. Okay. We searched the Southern Plains back when the wife ran off too, right? I believe we did, yes. Lots changed since then. So it's kind of nice when we find something that hasn't. The fact that couple is still arguing almost fills me with... I don't know, hope, I guess. If you ask me, that particular couple could benefit from a little change. Interesting that the dialogue runs through into the loading screen. I like that. I was fully expecting it to be cut off. Okay, this was the guy. Oh, hey. It's you. What's up? You're related to the ferryman who carries a red bag around, right? I guess we could ask the postman over in Seafront. Just once I would enjoy receiving a quest that can be sold in the general vicinity of the Asker. Yeah, th this was the moment where I was like, okay, yes, I get it. Fourth wall breaking, that's kind of... It's cute and all that, but... The, the quest structure of Replicant is definitely annoying sometimes in that sense. I cannot believe how many trips we have made simply to track down a single man. It's alright to do this kind of thing every now and then. I only pray this is not the calm before some manner of storm. Say there, lad, have you ever penned a missive? You mean a letter? No. I'm not big on writing. It always takes me forever to figure out what I want to say. Yeah, because we've already heard all of these lines already, I'm fine with just sort of zooming through. But because we are getting little pockets of extra scenes and stuff, um, it's something that I'm still going to have to show in general. So when does Louise turn nasty? Hey there, Louise. Say, where'd you get that red bag? Oh boy. Hmm? She does have a monstrous appetite. Found it on the ship, did you? <laughs> you kids are so darn curious about everything. Anywho, it's good to see you. Afraid I don't have any bread today, but I did bring you something. Here, it's a ribbon. Let me tie it in your hair for you. Well, they seem to be getting along well. Well, what do you think? Pretty nice, huh? <laughs> huh, what's that on the floor? Oh, it's a mirror. Well, that's a stroke of luck. But let's go ahead and check out your new look. If you go over there where it's brighter, you'll be able to see yourself more clearly. Uh, what's wrong? Don't you want to see? Oh, I see. You don't like sunlight. Guess your eyes are pretty sensitive after spending all this time in the dark, huh? <laughs> well, it's not like we can have you stay here forever. We should work on getting you out of here so you and me can go look at the sea together. How's that sound? <sighs> Steam's really nice as well. The music of this game is, of course, just brilliant and continues to be throughout. It's another one of these where I just say what you will, but I'm sure like 99% of people love the music. That's one of those like hot takes. I think near Automata slash Replicant's music is overrated. It's like, nah, you're just lying. You're just saying that to troll. There's no way you genuinely believe that. I'm sure the comments will be fun on this one. Hey, Postman. Oh, sorry. You're not him. I'm sure as hell not. I just swung by to pick up a letter and wound up running the damn place. As you do. Anyway, you here for a package or something? Actually, you know what? I bet she went to check out the huge shipwreck that drifted into the inlet the other day. Not often something like that comes around. It's all the kids have been talking about. Let's go. I do wonder if in Route B they could have tightened up some of this back and forth by like skipping it to some extent. Because like, the game acknowledges that it's annoying. 
but then it also forces you to do it twice, which is annoying, so... I don't know. Okay, the sepia tone's gone. Hey, Louise. I brought your food for today. What's wrong? Aren't you hungry? Huh. You haven't been eating much lately. Are you okay? <laughs> well then, let's try this. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. It's called a song. Humming a jaunty tune is the best thing for putting a spring in your step. Songs are like a little bit of wisdom that makes the tough times easier. I love them personally. I mean, not that I'm any good at singing. Oh, your voice is a bit rough there, but you're actually pretty good. Huh. You know, I knew someone who lived in the town lighthouse before she died. She used to hum this same song a lot. I heard it every time I stopped by to deliver something, and I guess it just kind of stuck. Of course, that was quite a while ago. <laughs> Hey, are, are you trying to cheer me up? <laughs> you are a kind soul, Louise. So what is the deal with all these like, bodies and stuff? What makes Louise turn? Is it that he forces her to go into the light or something? I'm sensing some really weird magic going on here, sunshine. You feeling it too? Yeah. Is it... a shade? <laughs> Are you actually trying to think something through rather than just jumping in and killing? What's wrong, Kaine? Nothing. It's just... I'm sensing a presence from Seafront. Something like a shade. A shade in the town? That's not good. Yeah, that's one thing I'm I'm hoping to see a little bit more of. Like when Kaine and Emil, they don't go inside the shipwreck. Like, what are they talking about? What are they doing? A shipwreck, is it? I suppose we might as well investigate, seeing as how we lack any other tenable leads. Right. Let's head for the inlet. Kaine, Emil. What's going on? I haven't seen you two come into Seafront in, well, ever, I guess. Sorry for the surprise. Kaine said she sensed something strange in the area. Strange how? Like a shade? Maybe. I'm not sure. There's some kind of sound or something coming from up ahead. What an incredibly specific piece of information the hussy has graced us with. <laughs> okay, now he's just been an arsehole. <laughs> wow, I mean, that time he deserved a, a snapback, but he didn't get one. What is it, Kaine? Nothing. Let's get moving. Yeah, so she knew trouble was brewing from the start. Be yeah, curious to see what happens to her and Emil when they don't follow us in. Because again, like during Route A, that was one of the annoying things where they took them away again. And they just kind of did their own thing while we were investigating the ship. Until we met back up at the end. We're going to need to figure out some way to get inside that thing. This ship is in a state of want and decay. Surely we can find a hole or some such. These planks seem to be covering a rather large hole. We can probably get in if we move them out of the way. I'm worried about whatever it is Kaine is sensing. We should make sure we're really prepared before going inside. Yeah, let's just go. So 
So, were you able to write that letter? You know, now that I've taught you how. So we've got the bloodstains. Not yet, huh? Well, there's certainly no reason to rush. <laughs> you know, it makes me happy that you've taken such a shine to me. First time we met, I didn't have the foggiest idea what was going on in that head of yours. <laughs> so, hey, I've been thinking. <laughs> How about you come live with me? It might be kind of nice to have a daughter around. She can't leave. Not into it, huh? Guess I should have figured. I'm sad to hear it, but it's your choice, of course. Huh? The floor's wet. Uh... Wait, is this... blood? Oh dear. Are you... Poor guy. Oh, baby, that is one hell of a smell. We got something real nasty nearby, eh, Sunshine? <sighs> Come on, don't tell me you ain't picked up on it yet. You of all people gotta know what this smell means. This ship is in poor condition indeed. Do try not to thrash about and bring its timbers down around us, hussy. Whatever. Sure, you're all right, Kaine. You really shouldn't push yourself. Hey, I've got an idea. How about you and me search outside and get some nice fresh air in the process? Sure, let's do that. Sounds good. Take care of Kaine for us, Emil. Emil is on the case. Come on, Kaine. Let's get the lead out. This place is pretty gloomy. I'm having a hard time imagining any townsfolk hanging around here. Well, as we've no other leads, let the search begin. Yeah, it's one of these things where as you get to hear Kaine's sort of internal struggle with Tyron, and you hear just Vice being a troll and an arsehole to her, it, it obviously makes you sympathize with Kaine a lot more. Like, she's already got so much to deal with, and you have, like, Vice hurling all of these, like, annoying... Um, like phrases and, and calling her names and that kind of thing. So, of course, it becomes less funny when you find out what Kaine is dealing with internally. And especially when she stops giving it back, like when she when they're kind of going back and forth, it's obviously a lot of fun. But at this point in the story, it's like, it's just Vice being, Vice being a dick. Look there, on the floor. I believe we have found ourselves a lantern. And there's still some oil in it. Nice. Here we go. Oh dear. Look at the bodies. They are all people from town. And I fear the missing ferryman. Oh no. This can't be real. Why? Why did he? Why did everyone have to? God damn it. <sighs> Pull yourself together, lad. Remember the presence Kaine sensed? The culprit who murdered these poor folk likely awaits us further within. I won't let them get away with this. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the final things left, I guess. I mean, Louise... <laughs> that's enough, lad. Avert your eyes. I mean, Louise doesn't seem like the kind of shade or like, you know, if it is like half shade, like a human possessed by a shade then they don't seem like they have a particular appetite for killing people, but I guess the only explanation is that maybe they need to kill and feast on humans for sustenance, but these guys don't look like they've been feasted on per se. So it's like, why why was she killing them in the first place? And if she wasn't, and that was another one of those red herrings where we think that, oh, well, she slash her shade form did it, maybe it wasn't that. So maybe that would be like a twist in this particular story, but if she really did do it, and while you could see the blood like with her and the fact that she refused the food and that kind of stuff, I can only assume that she started to get an appetite for blood instead of just normal food. Because, I mean, usually they make us feel bad for killing whatever it is we kill. 
So if Louise didn't do it, that's that's how you achieve that, I guess. Yeah, I guess my assumption is that if she did do it, it was so involuntary, like the shade took over and do it, did it, that the human part of Louise, like the little girl, she didn't want it, anything to turn out this way. And so in killing the shade, you also have to kill Louise as well. So we end up killing an innocent little girl who was possessed by something more sinister. Yeah, so for me, it's hard to tell right now, is this like a, a Kainé type situation where it was like a human that got possessed by a shade, but in a way where they were still able to retain a human form most of the time, or is this just a, a full on like human that got turned into a shade? So in that sense, I'm a little bit confused. There's like this sort of, it's almost like there's different stages to it. Like is Kainé identical to Louise, but Kainé just has more control? Is that the difference here? Or is like, a, I don't know, because Kainé is obviously... She maintains her human form almost at all times. She can speak as she wants to speak, but Louise has a seemingly human form, but she can't speak properly and all that kind of stuff. So I think it it's, must be like different stages of possession and being possessed in different ways, like the will of the human versus the will of the shade and, and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. <laughs> So there you go. This is just a, a, a shade's sort of dream of trying to become human and escape their escape their fate as a shade. But it's one of those where you can't feel quite as much remorse because we can't have that. Hey there, you two. Hey, I didn't know you guys came back inside. Did we ever? Found a nice hole in the wall to slide through. But then, we heard a bunch of noise coming from that super dark floor downstairs. You sure had us worried. Yeah, sorry about that. You feeling better, Kane? A little, yeah. Sorry for the trouble. Good. That's... that's good. Jeez, you seem really down in the dumps. Did something happen? <laughs> Tell me, Kaine, that presence you sensed. It's on the floor above us. I feared as much. It seems we've little choice but to press onward. Okay. <laughs> oh man, that smell is getting ripe! How you feeling there, sunshine? Not great. Can't you tell? Yes, I think for this particular session the moral, the moral of the story is that with these shades, some portion of them, they definitely don't want to kill humans and they're not doing it out of some sort of um i don't know instinctive hatred or instinctive urge to kill sometimes they they're much more innocent and human than they seem but sometimes things play out in this way and they still cause enough damage that you don't really have much choice still cause enough hurt and damage that we still have to just take them out but i mean it's obviously very interesting to see a shade um, like befriend and want to be with a human in such w in such a way. We saw the shade in the robot. This would be the final room, yes. We saw the shade in the robot, but we hadn't seen a shade and a human become friends in this particular way. The culprit who murdered the townspeople may be behind this very door. Let us proceed with utmost caution. <laughs> <laughs> 